Thank you and good afternoon. The theme of today's TEDx Modul University Vienna is we have to talk. Uh, talk about issues of global importance, talk about issues that matter. Since we live in the digital age, a lot of this talk uh, is happening on the websites of news media organizations or on social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook. Today I'm going to present automated methods to analyze this digital talk uh, with a special focus on visual tools to analyze global communication flows. As with many big data applications, the challenge of such tools is to ingest a very large amount of data. To structure it automatically, to extract knowledge and to provide decision support solutions on both the individual and collective level. Most traditional data mining applications use structured information, so they operate on time series. However, human communication does not operate uh, with such structured data. We communicate in unstructured manner in the form of text or images. And the best decision support systems to analyze both types of information, the structured and the unstructured. Take financial markets as an example. Of course, to understand an individual stock or the market in its entirety, we need fundamental data. We need to know about the business model, about the revenues and such. But it's very dangerous to underestimate the power of social media. If we take the 2013 hack of the Associate Press account, uh, and their announcement that there was a bombing in the White House, this is the perfect example. As you can see on the left side of this screen, the Dow Jones index immediately went into freefall. It recovered very quickly once it was known that this was a fake posting, but of course for many investors uh, the damage was done. So when one deals uh, with financial markets, uh, it's quite important to consider what happens in social media doesn't always stay in social media. In environmental issues or climate change, it's very crucial to understand the ecosystem, to understand how human interventions are impacting the ecosystem. But a lot of our decisions uh, are being based on what's happening in the infosphere. So it makes a huge difference if a spin doctor of a populist party or climate scientists are more successful in being heard uh, in these channels. So what we need are tools to make this dialogue more transparent, to really understand what the different stakeholders stand for and also what the agenda is. And today I want to present you two concrete applications. The first one is Unip Life Web Intelligence, which our team developed on behalf of the United Nations Environment Program. Their mission is to collect from all their member countries a lot of environmental data, a lot of indicator data that describe the physical world, that talk about pollutants, that um, give a really good idea of what's happening in the real world. Our task in this project was to add the infosphere, to be able to analyze what stakeholders communicate around these environmental issues and how they relate to sustainable development goals. For doing this, we need to collect a lot of information. We collect it from news media organizations, from social media, and from international organizations. In total, that's 10 million documents per month uh, in four languages, English, uh, French, German, and Spanish. And the second step is really the crucial one, the extraction of knowledge from this high volume content feed. And the first two questions I would like to discuss is the what is being communicated and how is it communicated. For the factual part of this question, uh, we can calculate keywords automatically, we can employ document summarization techniques. For the how, we need opinion mining, we can determine sentiment automatically. It's a quite a complex process where every single sentence of these 10 million documents needs to be analyzed. The system needs to check are there any known positive or negative terms in the sentence. One needs to consider grammatical, structures such as negations, which of course turn around the polarity, or weak weakeners or amplifiers um, that also have an impact on the polarity. So let's take a look. If we take this information and put it into a visual dashboard, 
So this is how the system looks like. It is a synchronized combination of various analytical tools. The design philosophy behind it was if there is a change in one part of the system, if there's a user interaction in one of the windows, all the others are updated in real time. If you take a look at the center, there's a list of documents which is not too different from a regular search engine, but such a web intelligence application can do much more. With a single click, you can drill down on the sentence level, get all the quotes to a topic. I've chosen air pollution here to demonstrate the system. It ties together not only the different channels, news media, social media organizations, but it also ties together the different languages. So it's uh, a cross-lingual query for air pollution, and then it has background translation services, and it gets the coverage in all the languages that are being monitored. We can aggregate this sentence list uh, to end up with a word tree, which conveys the major threat in a, con in a conversation. If we aggregate it even more, we end up with tech clouds, or with keyword graphs, the color coding employed in these visualizations is sentiment. Green is for positive coverage, red is for negative coverage. And um, on the left side, the keyword graph, you see there are various topics being discussed. For example, health issues such as asthma, legislative processes, but also recent events such as the Olympics uh, in Rio. Because it was a project done for the United Nations, one of the goals was to support all the UN languages. So the system supports seven languages uh, for the analysis, including, as you can see here, Russian and Chinese. Let's now move on to the next key questions. The who is driving the coverage? Who are the opinion leaders that are um, most influential? And where? are the hotspots of coverage. The latter can be analyzed by a process called geotagging, which again has to look at every single sentences in all these documents that are being collected, and look for geographic identifiers, the name of countries, the name of cities, for example. Look up in a geographic database called Gazetteer and determine the coordinates. And this is how the system can, for each document, assign coordinates and then uh, project the coverage. For the next few examples, I've chosen a different search query, biodiversity. And the most straightforward way to analyze the opinion leaders, those who are publishing most on the issue, uh, is in the form of a table. This table shows who was publishing most on the issue of biodiversity, uh, what is the reach, what is the impact that they can achieve with their coverage, and what is the average sentiment towards the issue. Taking this table and creating a two-dimensional scatter plot is a very effective way to convey the edi editorial stance uh, of these news media horizontally. It's the frequencies on the right, it's those media outlets that publish most, and on top uh, are the positive ones, on the bottom uh, the more negative ones. In terms of geography, as I've mentioned, we can extract the coordinates for each document automatically, do a query on biodiversity, and then on the map, one can see which are the locations that are being co-referenced with biodiversity. We can add trajectories. In that way, we not only see where are the locations that are being discussed, but also where does this information originate from. There are interactive drill-down functions uh, through a tooltip, and one can, for example, focus on Kenya, which triggers the system to sort the search results by proximity from the target location. So it's, it's a very transparent uh, view and also lets analysts investigate an issue in a very regional, regional context. For the last dimension, time, so when are things happening, uh, what are trends, what are emerging stories, I would like to use a different system to show that the underlying technology is generic and cannot only be used for environmental issues. Uh, there's another system we have recently launched, which is the US election 2016 web monitor. And as the name suggests, we are tracking the coverage around the presidential race and the candidates. The dashboard looks very similar to the one built for the United Nations. 
but of course the topics that are being configured and the content that is being fed to the portal is quite different. One of our goals here was to distinguish between uh, what some refer to as the horse race journalism, which is not really talking about issues that matter, but talking about just the process of the election and who is leading and who is falling behind. So this would be the gray dotted line. And from that, the system distinguishes coverage that only mentions one candidate. So the gray dotted line mentions both candidates. Uh, the other lines are the coverage on one specific candidate and are therefore really more focused on, on issues. And the diagram you see in the upper left corner here shows the view from the 1st of July until today, and it shows the frequency of the coverage. And at the start of this timeline, you have two very pronounced peaks, which were the Democratic and the Republican Convention. It is very obvious when the running mates were being announced because suddenly people were talking about them. On the right, there is a peak, which is a peak in the horse race journalism coverage because it was about the TV debate and a lot of people were talking about the performance of both candidates uh, in here. And there's also a peak towards the end that reports about the running mates, which had also recently a TV debate. The second diagram below, this is showing sentiment now. So this is not the frequency of coverage, but it is uh, the average positive or negative sentiments towards the candidates. There is one quite obvious peak for Hillary Clinton, which was during the Democratic Convention, which is when she was announced the official nominee of her party, and there was a lot of coverage around the fact that she is the first uh, female candidate from one of the major parties uh, in history. As for the others, um, we see a downward trend for the, for the running mates, which becomes even more obvious when we apply a 30-day average to get rid of the fluctuations in the diagram, uh, and then we see that the sentiment um, went down for them quite considerably. We can do now, of course, the same type of analysis for social media, for Twitter, and there the situation is different. Most of the coverage there is just on one candidate, which has two explanations. A lot of social media users are not that interested in having a balanced coverage of the presidential race, but they want to support their own candidate. Another more technical reason is, of course, tweets are very short, 140 characters. There's just not uh, that much space in that tweet to really talk about both candidates and their performance. Sentiment in social media fluctuates uh, qu quite a bit. And towards the end, it is a very close race uh, between the two candidates in slightly negative territory. The last visualization that I'm going to show today is not embedded in the system yet. It's one of our latest research prototypes. Uh, it's a story detection algorithm. So that's a bit different to step uh, forward because before we were analyzing specific topics. We defined topics we are interested in and then we were tracking the coverage around these topics. This by contrast is based on cluster analysis so we, we don't give the system a topic. We want the system to find out the emerging stories by itself and tell us what's really relevant. And in this cluster analysis so all these markers are documents and the color shows the membership to one of the clusters, to one of the stories. And there are two quite distinct clusters on the TV debates from both the presidential candidates uh, and their running mates. The nice thing about this visualization is you can do a seamless transition and project it on a timeline, which then not only shows which are the dominant stories, but also how is the sequence over time and when did they start appearing. This concludes my presentation, which tried to answer a few of the key questions that communications managers are facing on a daily basis. It is the what is being communicated and how, who is driving the coverage, and when and where are the hotspots of coverage. The aim is to provide a system that can increase the transparency of the dialogue, of the debates that are happening in social media. Both are open data platforms, so they're free to use. And for individuals, 
they allow to explore the wide spectrum of topics that are available online and to look beyond their own filter bubble. For communication managers and professional stakeholders, they represent a novel tool to plan their strategic positioning and to measure the success of their communications. Thank you.